the best and most proven way to pass the CompTIA a exams is to answer every question correctly. Gee, Mr. Obvious. Actually, you can get a few questions wrong and still pass the exam. Nobody's perfect and CompTIA allows for that. One of the first documents you should download at the beginning of your preparations to take the a exams is the exam objectives book list for each of the two exams. These are the cover pages for the two objective documents. Since it is very unlikely that you will take both the exams at the same time, you should only work on one of the objective booklets at a time. You can take the exams in either order, but for this discussion, let's start with the core one exam. The first page of the objective booklet provides general information about the exams. The information on this page actually applies to both the exams, and this page is in each of the exam booklets. On this page, there is general information concerning content, accreditation, CompTIA's acceptable use policy, and a note that there may be content on the exam that might not be listed in the objectives. The next page in each of the CompTIA a exams, the 220-1201 and the 220-1202, or the core one and two exams objectives is basic information for the specific exam covered in that booklet. The test detail section provides the basic framework of the exam, including its name as required by the exam, the number of questions, the question types, the exam length in minutes, the recommended experience level of an exam candidate, and the minimum score needed for passing the exam. The section entitled Test Objective or Test Domains lists the exam domains and percentage of the total exam each domain provides. Each of the a exams, the Core 1 and the Core 2, have as many as 90 questions each. So what this section indicates is that on the Core 1 exam, you can expect 13% of the exam questions or about 12 questions on mobile devices. Likewise, you should encounter as many as 23 questions on hardware. This doesn't mean that you shouldn't study mobile devices less than hardware. It just indicates the distribution of the questions. The final section on this page in the 220-1201 Core 1 exam is discussion on troubleshooting methodology knowledge. In the past, this topic was a domain objective of its own, but now it is considered to be a common best practice and the certification candidate's knowledge of this troubleshooting methodology is assumed. Although this information is not specifically an objective of the exam, it is something you should know and practice. The next section of the objective booklet contains the specific objectives within each domain. This is the first page of the mobile device domain of the core one exam, showing its three objectives. Notice that for each of the objectives, there are specific areas you can expect to see in the exam questions are listed under each objective. For example, for the objective 1.1, for which questions will present a scenario regarding monitoring of mobile device hardware and the use of appropriate replacement techniques. The question for this objective will refer to the specifics listed for the objective. In this case, battery, keyboard, RAM, storage devices, and more are listed. The test details and exam objectives page for the 220-1202 Core 2 exam similarly lists its information and objectives. For the Core 2 exam, the test details are essentially the same as for the Core 1 exam, with the exception of the exam name, of course. However, the exam objectives are different as they are related to software rather than hardware. As it was with the Core 1 exam, the Core 2 exam objectives are divided into domains, except in this case, there's only four domains, operating systems, security, software troubleshooting, and operational procedures. And like the core one exam, each domain contributes a specific percentage of the exam questions. For example, both operating systems and security domains contribute 28% of the questions, which is about 25 questions. 
Notice that on the core two exam, the objectives are closer in the percentages of the exam each represents. The core two exam, like the core one, has a section for each of the objective domains that lists specific objectives and their detailed items. This is the first page of the operating systems domain, listing three of its eight objectives. Okay, so now you know where you can find what to study for the exams, but how should you actually study? Gilster's Law says you can never tell, and it all depends. And it depends on you, your experience and knowledge gained from courses, reading, on the job determines what you should focus on and how much. Remember that the CompTIA a exams assume that you have the equivalent of one year of hands-on experience as an IT technician. I strongly suggest that you take as many practice exams as you can for either exam. You can find many practice tests in books, videos, and online. You can't take too many practice tests. Seek out tests that include performance-based questions. When you are consistently scoring 85% or higher on the practice tests, you are ready to schedule your exam. Practice tests also help you practice completing a test in the allocated time. And when you're under the pressure of taking the exam for real, the time can fly by. So hopefully this helped you to know what you must know before taking either of the CompTIA a certification exams. Let us be the first to congratulate you on your success in gaining your a certification.